I'm here with actor Tyler Austin. Um, before we talk about uh, some of the projects you've worked on, let's talk a little bit about how you broke into acting. I know you kind of had a tragedy that led you into, into it? Yes, you could call it that, yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it started, uh, my debut on stage mm -hmm. was in a probably very well-known production of It's a Small World when I was in <laughs> third grade. <laughs> and I played like some English person and I had like one line. Mm -hmm. I was like an English guard and I was all very excited. So that probably is where like acting started. Uh, but when I hit high school and I was about 14 years old and I was a freshman, my house <laughs> caught on fire. Uh, it's kind of a funny story. My mom does energy healing out of our basement. She's a Reiki healer. Okay. And she claims that she blew out a candle. It reignited. Hmm. And so I was without a house when I was in high school for like maybe a year and a half, two years. And we were in different hotels while the insurance company was doing all the fun things that they do. Yeah. And I stayed after school and just worked on shows that's like what I did I stayed there until 9 p.m. with my teachers mm -hmm. just doing everything I was part of every show and I guess the rest is history from there and where did you go to college to study acting or I film? went I went to University of Buffalo mm -hmm. and I actually did not go for acting I went for film production okay uh, my first love was always making films I was making films when I was really really young actually when the house caught on fire I started making YouTube videos and was part of the original YouTube partner program mm -hmm. which isn't really there anymore but it was specific people that got paid right uh, and that was really really fun it was more of just like an outlet of you know just like talking to the camera doing that sort of thing and then I started breaking into making little music videos to like songs that I like I made some cute music video I don't even remember the guy's name now it was some underground country singer when I was 15 years old he decided to I don't know pay me to make a little music video and so I went to school for anyway I went to school uh, for yeah. film production that's where it all started and what happened was when I was in college I had a minor in theater mm -hmm. and the way that it worked at UB was you couldn't take certain classes unless you were a major because they had people on you know certain tracks where they had to take it and all that so I lied to the uh, to my counselor and said I want to be a double major in theater and film production. <laughs> so I got into all of the classes that I wanted to take. I got all the training that I wanted, and I think I was like four credits away from graduating with a double major. But I wanted to graduate on time, so. The day before I graduated, I knocked it back down to a minor, <laughs> and I pieced out of there. And that was kind of where my training came from. So I mostly went for film production. And then you, you moved here to the city. Yes, I moved here. I graduated from college in 2014. And then I lived at home with my parents for a year and a half, mm -hmm. working my butt off, mm -hmm. like 40 hours a week in a diner. Yeah. Uh, was coming into the city I don't know, three times a week doing auditions. Mm -hmm. And over the weekend, I'd stay at people's apartments and I'd audition, which is how I got Grindr. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I eventually moved to the city three years ago, two and a half years ago. And now for those who are interested in Grindr, you can see uh, the trailer in, in, the, in this interview. Um, talk a little bit about your experience on Grindr. I know it was a very serious subject matter. And was that your first big feature film role or had you done smaller things and then this was your first lead? I had done smaller things. Mm -hmm. uh, the first film that I ever did, I was in college, and this is a really fun story actually. Okay. I was, I had no idea where to look for auditions. Mm -hmm. I was like completely, I had no idea. I was mm -hmm. just lost in the water. So I turned to where anybody would turn to and I went to Craigslist. Oh, and I was you like, go. oh, you know, I love to act. Maybe mm -hmm. this won't lead to anywhere, right? I remember seeing an ad every, Every ad on there was for some sort of porn acting or something yeah. like that, right? So I went with the least creepy ad, and it was this Which guy. Which was no small feat in and of itself. <laughs> yes, it was like the only one, <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> and it had like a nice energy, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll go with this one. And it was this guy who was writing a post saying, I have a grant from whatever company. I want to make a film. I love films. He mm -hmm. wanted to make a zombie movie where the lead was, the lead who was the hero of the film was gay and it wasn't 
what drew me to work with him was that he didn't really want to make it a point in the film. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of start as like this weak character whose parents don't like him and they don't get along and mm -hmm. eventually lead up to, you know, axe wielding, chainsaw, like blood all over, yeah. like taking care of everybody. <laughs> so I was super, super into it. I ended up meeting this guy. It was like at like a Dunkin' Donuts. And I remember he was wearing... I forget what shirt he was wearing. I think it was like a Serenity or Firefly shirt. And I was like, okay, we're going to get along. Mm -hmm. I love Joss Whedon. Yeah. I love this guy. So we start making this film. And the man who decided to make it was a little in over his head. He, di he didn't realize as much went into a feature film mm -hmm. as he was thinking. And one of the producers on the film, Ken Constantino, who I'm still very good friends with, he works a lot for Troma. Uh, he just made the remake of Attack of, a, of the Killer Shrews, okay. which is like super cool and it's doing really, really well. He ended up coming on and he had some experience directing. Okay, so I'm playing the lead of the movie. This new guy comes on. It starts to be more like a professional production. Mm -hmm. Nobody was paid on this, but by the end of the production, there was about 50 hands that had partaken in doing this. It was really, really cool. It was in Niagara County, so up in Buffalo, and it was just for the love of independent film, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so I make this film, and then he goes, I need somebody to edit it. Well, I went to school for film production, yes, and right. so I actually edited the feature while I acted in it, which is something I will never, never do again. <laughs> I will <laughs> never do that again. The amount of times I watch certain takes being like, oh, I wish I could change that, yeah, or I didn't yeah, do this well. Oh my God. And then, you know, you don't want to like cut to yourself too much, right. but you're also the lead of the film. Mm -hmm. So it just, no, 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 no. And uh, we just released it at like this little theater in Buffalo. People came out to see it. It got nominated for some independent awards, which was really cool in the Buffalo Fantastic Dreams Festival, which mm -hmm. was awesome. Uh, and then eventually it was bought by Troma which is really cool, and you can watch it now. They renamed the film to Dead Inside. It was originally Within. Okay. It's a fun little watch if you're into trauma B-movies, which mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of, so <laughs> I was, like, totally down for it. So that was, like, my first... First, first, yeah. First, first film. And then, Grinder, you're kind of a co-lead, kind of. Yeah, I would call it a co-lead, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you and Brandon yeah. are kind of... Yeah, yeah, I would say Brandon more so, but... Yeah, I would say co-lead. Yeah. Um, the way that I got involved with Grinder, I was on Backstage.com, mm -hmm. and there was an advertisement for Grinder, you know, whatever. And I remember that the description said that it was more of an exploitation film, and they were interested. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was because the film has changed so mm -hmm. much, but they were interested in exploring like super sexualized images inspired by like 1970s pornographic mm -hmm. images. Yeah. So I remember being a little bit nervous, but I was very, very interested in the idea. I've always been somebody that is drawn to like super dark premises. I'm not afraid to like, you know, go with a really dark theme or upset people in the process. <laughs> and I said, okay, this is the project I think I'm gonna do. It was the first time somebody was offering me money. <laughs> uh, and I remember I went to audition. It was a super chill audition. He just kind of talked to me for about two hours, three hours about what I like in film. Mm -hmm. um, as a gay actor, what I like about LGBT films, what I think could change in LGBT films. We started talking about that. Uh, he had given me the original script once he decided that I was right for the part. Uh, and the original script was way different than it is than now, than, than, than what was produced. Like totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. I had like six, sex scenes or seven sex scenes that were like full nude full out there very risky if mm -hmm. you will in terms of the subject matter mm -hmm. with the age difference and all of that uh and i remember when i got the script <laughs> it was very very funny i got the script and next to each of the sex scenes there were all these dollar signs and i remember being like isn't that what they do sorry isn't that what they do to write uh porn scenes basically mm -hmm. saying like we're gonna get the money shot here like mm -hmm. what is this and I remember Brandon saying like oh it's kind of an inside joke when I write a script da -da 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 -da. and he keeps going on and on and on telling me that like you know I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do mm -hmm. and I said well if it's the purpose of the film I'm willing to do it mm -hmm. and then if the people that have seen the film now you can tell that it is really not anything like that yeah, anymore it's, it's really actually way more tame than it yeah. turned out to be and I guess it just kind of it was interesting. I don't know. I don't know what the decision was on Brandon's angle to mm -hmm. kind of change the script around and make it more of this, but he made it more of a personal piece, and mm -hmm. he took pieces of his own life and put it into the film, which I think just kind of 
made a little interesting piece, yeah. which I'm proud of it. And now you are saying that you also enjoy filmmaking. Yeah. Do you go into a project just strictly the actor's head, or do you go in with both? And does that have influence your performance at all? When I go in to actually act, or when, when I go into audition? To act. Uh, to, act. Yeah. to act. In the, pro in the project. Hmm. Like, do you say, oh, I would have done this differently, or I should do this, or, yeah. There are some How's moments that? where How's I that do that. <laughs> well, my favorite thing ever is the fix it and post mm -hmm. line. I love that, uh -huh. because there are moments where, as an actor, I know that it can't be fixed in post, mm -hmm. and I know, like, what needs to happen in order to make it the way that they want it. Yeah. Um, I do think it also helps me a little bit as an actor, because... Mm -hmm. The scene in Grinder, actually, there's a scene where me and um, John Fleming are sitting in a car and he's telling me that I have to go do something and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Me and him are actually sitting, well, I'm sitting, with my feet up on the driver's seat in front of me, scrouching down to look smaller than him. And it was like one of the most uncomfortable positions <laughs> ever. It looks like I'm sitting normally in the film, so yeah, that's but... pretty cool. Uh, but that stuff kind of clicks with me a little bit better, or saying... You know, if you have a shot where somebody's in the front, at the foreground, and somebody's in the background, and they kind of have a side profile, and they're both mm -hmm. talking to each other, but not necessarily looking at each other, um, I guess I understand that a little bit more as an actor, that it's more about the composition of the image, mm -hmm. as opposed to, this doesn't feel right, I'm not looking directly at the person, or this feels way more heightened than it would normally feel. Right, right. If that makes sense. Absolutely. So what does 2019 look like for you? Busy auditioning? Definitely auditioning, doing a lot of auditions. Mm -hmm. I am actually working on one project that I can't talk about, unfortunately. You choose anything about it? It's really cool. It's a <laughs> it's a collaborative effort with a bunch of people that I've been working on for a little while. But nice. uh, they'll starring kill, they'll in kill or me if I'll say anything. Starring in or, or I think so. Like it's that. it's kind of uh, we're making it as we go, which mm -hmm. is also one of my favorite ways to do it. So I could end up stepping back and being behind or acting nice. in it, doing whatever that is. Well, um, we'll have to do a second interview when that. Can, more of that can be shared. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I just can't talk more about that. Um, and I have been recently doing a dark history ghost tour mm -hmm. in Williamsburg on an old-fashioned trolley where I dress up in like Victorian gear and tell people about death and Brooklyn to dark you history. Yeah, you seem to be a very dark enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. And um, so I do that, which. I think counts as acting. I mean, it makes me feel like I'm acting. I'm definitely, it helps with my improv and making people happy and making people smile yeah. and very, very fun, fun jokes. And nice. Yeah, I well, do it in drag once a month, so that definitely makes it acting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Only in New York could you get away with that. Only in New York. <laughs> Seriously, only in New York. Tyler, thank you so much for sitting down with me. I look forward yeah. to a second interview when we can talk a little bit more about your project. Absolutely, thank you for having me. You're welcome, thank you.